everybody, welcome back to Immigration Dream University. I'm your lawyer here, Tadisha Rowe. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, whatever it is, wherever you are. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode. So in this segment, we are going to be talking about another form of relief that is available to many people who may not actually be aware of it. It is called Special Immigrant Juvenile Visas. Special Immigrant Juvenile Visas, sometimes it's known short as CEGIS for Special Immigrant Juvenile Status. Now this particular relief applies to children and depending on where you are, um, depending on the jurisdiction that you are in, whichever state you're located in, that's your jurisdiction, is going to determine whether or not you are considered a child. Now here in the uh, state of Maryland, a child is considered anyone who is under the age of 21. So for instance, it is now March 6th as I'm filming this. So if I'm turning 21 tomorrow on March 7th, I will no longer qualify for this application or this status. However, if I submit everything today, the day before I turn 21, then I will still qualify because I'm under the age of 21, so I'm still considered a child in the state of Maryland. Okay, that's how technical it gets. Now, for some other jurisdictions, um, the age limit may be 18. So you do have to check with an attorney in your area who's familiar uh, with these types of visas to find out, first of all, if you qualify as a child um, in that jurisdiction, which is probably age 21 or age 18. And then the other thing that qualifies you for this visa is you have to be either abused, neglected, or abandoned by one or both parents. This gets to be very technical again. It's abused, neglected, or abandoned. It doesn't have to be all three. You just have to meet one of the criteria, and that depends on the laws in your jurisdiction as to whether or not you would satisfy that criteria, okay? So it's abused, abandoned, or neglected, and it doesn't have to be by both of your parents. Just one parent has to be responsible for that. So does this mean that your other parent can then file um, help you get this visa? Yes, it does, and that's actually a very important step. What you will need to do is go before a court that can grant custody or guardianship to an adult. And this adult can be your parent or it can be a third party. If you've been abused, abandoned, or neglected by one parent, then the other parent can certainly file for custody of you, okay? So it does not exempt them. Even if they were present for that abuse, abandonment, or neglect, as long as they were not a willfully participating party in that abuse, abandonment, or neglect, then yes, they can apply for custody of you. Third parties can also apply for custody or uh, guardianship. In many cases, it's gonna be guardianship, um, but they can also apply for custody. The criteria is going to be the same, and what the judge is looking at in those circumstances is that it is going to be in your best interest, the child's best interest, that this person is granted either custody or guardianship of you. Now, in many cases, there's been a death of one parent, and this is an area that's been um, debated, but um, in many cases, you can be granted special immigrant juvenile status based on the death of a parent. Some jurisdictions will actually consider that to be neglect or abandonment just by default of that parent's death because they are no longer in your life and able to care for you. And so under those circumstances, looking at it from your the best interest standpoint, it is in your best interest that this other parent or that this other third party is granted either custody or guardianship of you because obviously that parent who is now deceased is not able to do so. It's not in your best interest for them to have custody and they are deceased. In order to qualify for special immigrant juvenile visa, you will have to prove your case um, to whatever court um, you need to go before that has the ability to grant that custody or guardianship. That means that you're gonna have to provide them with proof of your birth, so you have to show them your birth certificate. Whoever that parent is uh, that has abused, abandoned, or neglected you, you will need to identify them as well. Uh, you do this through affidavits. Um, I did mention the birth certificate, so you use that as well. Um, if there are any death records, then you want to have that prepared to give to the judge also. Um, there's also a way to get consent from that neglectful or abusive parent. You would be surprised, but oftentimes, especially if they have not been in your life for many years, they will actually consent that it is in your best interest for that other parent to have custody or guardianship or that other third party to have custody or guardianship of you. So that is something that you can also work on um, if that parent is in fact living. 
second order is a bit more technical. This is the order of findings for special immigrant juvenile visa. And it has to be written in such a way that it is in compliance with the requirements for you to get that status through immigration law. That is what your lawyer will assist you in doing. Once you have both of those orders, which are usually issued at the same time, you only have to go to one hearing in order to get both uh, orders in most cases. I'm sure that there are exceptions to that, but in most cases it's just the one hearing and then the judge will actually issue both orders. Uh, once you have that, then you need to take another step, which is to file your application, including those orders, to USCIS. The form that you use to file for a special immigrant juvenile visa is form I-360. Now, if you remember, that is also the form that you use to file for a VAWA, which we've already discussed. If you haven't seen that video and you think that you may qualify, please go back and look because children do qualify for that as well. Now, that Form I-360 is for self-petitioning for your green card, and there are many different ways on that form that you can actually self-petition. Um, it is a cumbersome form, as I mentioned before, so if you um, do not have an attorney, I do recommend that you work with an experienced lawyer to help you to get through these steps. Um, I try to make it as simple as possible when I break it down. However, um, it can get overwhelming as you're reviewing all the forms and you have to have the steps and make sure that you do everything in order and that you do it correctly. But let's say that everything goes smoothly and you get those forms into USCIS. Um, they will approve your I-360 form, which is your Special Immigrant Juvenile Visa, depending on where you are from. So your country of nationality may um, determine, or it's not may, it is going to determine when your green card is available. For most countries, um, that green card will be available right away or in a short period of time. If you happen to be from the triangle, which is um, Guatemala, Honduras, or El Salvador, there is a long wait list, um, as well as a few other countries, there is a long wait list. Um, and so although you're, you'll be approved for that visa, the actual green card will not be available for probably another three years or so. Um, so don't panic if that happens to you. Just know that um, you are now under a legal status here in the United States. It's just going to take some time before they're actually able to approve that green card and issue it to you, or process it, I should say, and issue it to you. Okay, guys, so I hope that this information was helpful for you. If it was, please do like and subscribe to my channel. And also remember, se habla espanol muy bien. And so if you do speak Spanish as your primary language, please do not hesitate to call us. We have somebody on staff who's able to assist you as well.